today we're going to jump into privacy coins. Some you may recognize out there on the market. Probably one of the most popular is Monero and kind of the popularity of utilizing it as a full privacy transaction cryptocurrency. Today we're going to dive into that. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Let's get into privacy coins and why this may be a better investment than Bitcoin. Yes, I said that. There are people out there that are looking at long-term investment opportunities in the privacy coin space and shifting some of the projects to deal with kind of the demand requirement, especially around transactions, that could actually be a longer play on investing performance than Bitcoin itself. I want to jump to this story right here, which is Zcash creator. Uh, and you know him, Zuko Wilcox. He basically wants to take Zeke and be less like Bitcoin and more like Ethereum. And when you look at some of the things he's breaking down into, uh, and they kind of compare this to examples of what Charles did over, and when I say Charles, meaning Charles Hoskinson, did over at Cardano, uh, also the Polkadot team, and also Ethereum, Rival, Solana, all going into proof of stake work. And I'll explain proof of stake maybe for the first, for some of you who have never been to this channel before, make sure and subscribe right now. Just jump right in. We'll, we'll get you into technology, crypto, all that kind of stuff. But Zcash is a prominently, a prominently a privacy uh, coin co market cap of 1.2 billion. Uh, they think they're going to join in. And basically what their CEO said, or the founder of Electric Coin Company, which is Zuko, says, we think this is a development track for where uh, Zeke needs to go, meaning Zcash. So this is a big opportunity of a privacy product that would really kind of move in the right direction. By contrast, a proof of stake, just so you guys kind of know, uh, for proof of stake, people put up holdings uh, that they might want to deposit to in like a savings account. And then they'll periodically get a block reward. And based on their contribution, this is a proof of stake comparison as opposed to like proof of work, which is the model that Bitcoin uses. So let me kind of talk to you a little bit about here about what the this might mean. So for starters, switching to a proof of stake eliminates some of the downward pressure on the current issue with Zeke. Uh, meaning Zcash, miners, uh, which he is talking about here, basically say they don't have to cover their own electric costs, their overhead, et cetera. So they got to cash out on Zeke. So it cost, constantly is moving coins and tokens into the market, which creates pricing pressure. So proof of stake will allow them to basically eliminate that, the bulk of their overhead. So that would be huge in the sense of they wouldn't have to flood a market. So theoretically, the idea would be that the price would go up and engagement would essentially kind of also shift to long-term investing instead of short-term investing, which is what we see mostly on Zcash right now. So that's kind of where a lot of this is moving. And I think when you look at the future of where privacy coins are going, I want to jump back to a piece here that was done uh, not too long ago on privacy coin wants to offer fast and anonymous Payment. So this is not the only one. Zcash not the only one that's really moving to this. Let me zoom in on this one right here. This is actually a platform called Black Hat Coin. Uh, we'll use a proof of stake uh, consensus mining in addition to implementing its privacy layer on the new Snark Sapling protocol to provide fast and anonymous, untraceable payments. Again, this all moves back to um, traceability for transactions. That's one of the things that the ecosystem, like cash, if you think about fiat, fiat is untraceable in the sense, to a certain extent, anything below a $10,000 monetary system, unless you're a drug dealer and you're out there doing something else with it. But the likelihood is these kinds of projects like Zcash and Black Hat, many others, Monero, that are privacy coin or privacy projects, this would enable the transaction component much like fiat cash does when you pay five bucks to the guy to, you know, clean up your driveway or whatever it might be, that kind of traceability just isn't there in fiat cash. So the same kind of scenario is, and they believe, many of these operators believe that there's an opportunity here in the ecosystem for uh, what's happening in cryptocurrency. And because of that, because that being such a big market right now and such a few amount of players, this could really drive the pricing of these coins up. Uh, so it's not a secret Anyone in the artificial intelligence-based system analyzing crypto at transactions been developed in terms of tokens, uh, been tightened. Interest of very, uh, various centralized projects have been uh, basically uh, lobbied in every way. So this is one of the reasons that a lot of people are looking at in this direction. In this particular case, Black Hat's team wants to address the arbitrary, <laughs> arbitrary interference with privacy, creating a coin ecosystem that would have 
very strong and structural infrastructure and aim to create uh, what would enable uh, basically be a goods and services uh, play on maybe a bank card that's completely private instead of what you are dealing with like on your own Visa or MasterCard or American Express right now, all that being traceable, this would be quite a bit different. So I also want to jump, it's not just these projects that are kind of pointing in this direction. There's also some really big minds that are looking at privacy as a general overview that are basically saying, maybe this is something we should be really be on the lookout for, which also kind of creates this whole element around why the growth and potential of where privacy coins can go could be really big. This was back in April. Piece right here, privacy will become a more and more popular investing theme. This is by Barry Silbert. Just so you guys know, Barry Silbert is uh, the CEO and co-founder of a company by the name of Digital Currency Group. You, you probably know them because of all their investments in the cryptocurrency space, specifically this one right here, Coindesk, uh, and as their parent company. Uh, but they've, he himself has really placed a emphasis on privacy coins and kind of where this is going. Basically what he said is he believes privacy will draw, uh, be a draw for investors. So this is gonna get some of the people who are like a little scared or a little skeptical, maybe those naysayers that are like, hey, I really like my cash. This is an opportunity to kind of draw that particular community into the marketplace. Uh, two privacy coins he's really excited about. One we're really focused on today, of course, is Zcash and also Horizon Zen, which we're gonna do a breakdown on Horizon Zen soon, so be on the lookout for that. Basically, he's saying, I think privacy is gonna become pretty much a popular investing theme here. So it's something that people are going to flock to as we get critical mass in uh, cryptocurrency and also in blockchain technology. This is, is really kind of where he's pushing to go into that direction. Zcash is currently the 51st, this was back in April, 51st largest, um, Traded cryptocurrency by market cap, was, which was developed by ECC, uh, and of course, Zuka, which is who we just mentioned just a minute ago. All right, so let's jump to Zcash on Trade the Chain. And you can kind of see the price action back here in July at a buck five. And, and here's where the sentiment kind of starts to lull out. This is where I kind of, I'm not sure about Trade the Chain sometimes because it feels like it's a lot more. Uh, trailing indicator, meaning it's following the market rather than predicting where the market potentially can go. Uh, but again, this right here shows some negative sentiment, sentiment price action, which kind of is in line with this trough right here, but it didn't really uh, pull out quick enough to really measure this particular gain, which took it up to a dollar, or excuse me, $121.61. And then we see a little bit of this flat line, and this was more in line with where I think trade the chain can be used in these kind of movements versus these real hard actions right here between sentiment and price action. Now, of course, in this particular zone, it's trading at 110 bucks and sentiment was floating in at around 53. Then you see this big explosion and of course, price action is moving out of the zone again. So what does this mean in English? Mainly what's happening here with Zcash is we're seeing some price action I think there is some movement with where this could be going. If you are looking at doing something in a, a privacy project and you're, you're into that, then and you, maybe you're looking for something alternative from Monero because Monero really doesn't create an investment tool for you. It's a great tool for spending you know, in terms of transactions because there's a lot of people that are taking Monero right now across the internet. Um, and if you think about where that might go with Zcash, especially if they go to proof of stake, which Zuka is really kind of pushing pushing to, this may have some very interesting uh, aspects. So I want to jump over to trade trading view real quick, just to kind of take a look at a little bit of the history here of what we're zooming in on. And I'll jump in here. We scored a sentiment back in June uh, 16th. This was running a 51.49 uh, sentiment. This is down to the drop right here, which was putting the uh, price around 86 bucks. And that was on June 22nd. Amplification was somewhat low, but still decent. Picked up a little bit of this, this action and of course this sideways movement where we see typical um, behavior in the 40s right here. And then this new uh, sentiment bubble right here, scoring on July 7th and then running that one all the way out to July 20th, that was at 53.44, which rose a little bit from its previous bubble right here. Because remember, when we score sentiment, we always do it in downturns. Uh, the reason again is we don't want to get that kind of that 
chaff that you get in a lot of price action move when a coin or a token starts to rise. Sentiment kind of gets a little bit diluted and it's harder to read, but when, a, when it's on a downslide, sentiment gets very clear. And that's what we looked at. Amplification though, rose significantly from 4203 in the previous month to 49.80 in July. And that's where we had the amplification run up right here. And if you look at where this zone is kind of predicting where this could potentially go, uh, right here, you've got price action all the way up to about $123, which we missed this zone right here a little bit. Let me kind of just draw out the areas just so you guys know. This right here, we didn't, we didn't have uh, any amplification in there. So this was, a, a little, again, outside the zone of price action. Same thing with this zone right here but we were pretty much online with the trend itself. And we st still see this potentially moving out in this range. So we could see a range right here of about 136 down to 124 for Zcash based on some of the news and some of the trends that we are seeing, especially if they start to really flip and go into proof of stake. So this is kind of where we see it going. Lots of opportunities here. I think one of those things that we continue to want to play with uh, from time to time is really an analyzing what's happening on some of these projects in a deeper state. Now, one thing we are doing and we'd love to get your feedback is in the comments below, make sure and just let us know if projects like Zcash are interesting to you. Do you feel like if you're in Zcash and are you doing something with privacy tokens, do you think privacy is and has a big future? Of course, most people in crypto do believe that but do you think it does in terms of a future, in terms of value? That's gonna be the big one. We do these market movers from time to time. It's not investment advice, pretty straightforward. We pull together all these news and analysis uh, elements, and then we drop in uh, some of our own technical analysis to give you guys kind of a rundown here, but not investment advice. And again, again if you're uh, listening over on the podcast right now, uh, big audience over on Spotify. So thanks for listening in over there. Make sure and follow us there. But if you are listening over there and you want to get the, the full visual experience of what we're doing here with the charts and kind of showing all of this, jump over to the YouTube channel, which is just Paul Barron Network. And of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter, which is just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.